Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today, I've got a compilation of a five best seafood recipes from 2023, so stay tuned. So here at the end of 2023, I thought I'd go back and um, re-edit uh, five best seafood recipes from 2023. I've shortened them down, taken a lot of the fluff out of them so we can get through all of them in a reasonable time, amount of time. So the first one we're going to do today is one we filmed back in the spring. Had a great time. It's some good old striped bass cooked up right on the creek bank. laying on the deck at the same time. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry, guys. That's a pretty good one right there. We're going to weigh this one. They are mean rascals, too, these hybrids. Circle books. Barely in there, huh? Well. You saw us catching these things beginning of the video. Uh, I didn't decide to do a cleaning part because all we did was just was fillet them. Um, I've done that so many times now on the channel that it's not really something I need to do every time. And there's a million different ways. That looks pretty damn good right there. Next thing to go in, I pre-prepared, peeled and sliced these mangoes in just a couple of minutes. Time to flip. Nice char. I can use a little bit more time. Nice char on that one. Use our skillet over a little bit. Alright, so the mango's done. I'm gonna go ahead and put our we put our eole on the buns and we're going to go ahead and just brown them off real quick and do them two at a time since i dropped the last one in the sand so we'll feed that one to the fish we just want to toast these real quick and we're ready to put this together all right so everything is done we'll start out with our grilled brioche bun with the garlic lime aioli on there and put on our fish with our slice of charred mango see a bottom right there feel free to dress that up any way you like but I guarantee you that's gonna be some good striped bass right there As you might already know, we get a lot of shrimp right here. Uh, it's always on our channel. It's one of my favorite things. This video, I'm going to show you how to make our Florida version, not Cajun version, but Florida version of a beautiful shrimp gumbo. A gumbo was very common in Florida back in the old days, and we're going to do it Florida style today. Going to be very similar, but without as much spice. Here's the ingredients you're going to need. Uh, first of all, we need a roux. That's going to make the gravy. Equal parts of flour, butter. You can use butter and baking or butter or bacon grease, uh, lard for that matter. All right. Um, then you're going to need some broth. Here we got the shrimp broth. That is from the shrimp we're going to use in this dish. And we cooked the shells from the shrimp in just some salt and water and made the shrimp broth. Strain the shells out. Here's some chicken broth. Uh, that's going to be maybe needed as well. We're going to use that as backup to the shrimp broth in case we don't have enough. Here we got onions, bell, bell peppers. These are red bell peppers. I got celery, some shrimp. We just caught those yesterday right out of the river. Some nice shrimp in there. 
And uh, I got one chicken thigh, a meat on one chicken thigh in this bowl. I've got some uh, good smoked sausage. This is from Carol's Sausage and Meat up there in Georgia. Make excellent smoked sausage, any kind you prefer. Ochre, right off the plants, right over there. Just pick those, okay, slice them. I have some Creole Caesar just because it makes it easier. I got some of that Cajun two-step and some Tony side trees. If you don't have that salt, pepper, and cayenne pepper to taste, these are pretty tame. That's what I like about them. They're not too hot. All right, because for us Easterners, this gumbo can get really too hot. So today, since it's pouring down rain, thunder, and lightning, we're going to use the propane burner and the 10-inch large Dutch oven. Let's go ahead and get that over there and start getting it warmed up. And the most important thing about doing this whole dish is doing that rewrite. Let's we'll start out half a stick of butter and let that start melting down. Alright, so we we'll go chef cam here. Give you a point of view. First person point of view. I just put a little flour in there. And this is the trick. Get the same amount of flour as you got oil and by the way I'm ready to pull this thing off the fire at any time but after you go past that brown stage you start to get a red stage and you definitely can smell it when it's starting to happen and you smell that aroma coming off the pot it's almost on the edge of burning as long as you go slow and keep it moving. Uh, if you guys can see it now, about as far as I'm going to risk it. But it's starting to get that red color. I'm going to go ahead and take it up off the fire. There's still plenty of heat in the pot. But I'm going to keep stirring it for a minute. Alright, but it's getting that rusty red color. This is the hard part. After this, Everything else is pretty easy. All right, there's our beautiful gumbo base. In with a little bit of the shrimp broth. And immediately that's going to come up to a gravy. I like to start with just a little. And let it start to thicken. It's just good. See it starting to stand up. All right, and I'll go in with a little more. Well, this rain is really really coming now been coming there's our bell pepper use your favorite color that one happens to be red celery onions about the same amount and we'll reserve a few of those for closer to the end and we'll let that come up to a boil before we start putting in just in our liquid I really hope you guys can hear me over the sound of all this rain. There's our chicken. I use thighs. Smoked sausage. We do not want to put our shrimp in yet. Only these things here. We want that sausage to release all of its flavor and seasoning. Right now I'm going to go ahead and go uh, over our ingredients. Grab some of that chicken broth. Bring that moisture up just a little bit. All right, shrimp are going. We're going to reserve those shrimp for the very last. Remember, we already got that essence of the shrimp broth in there. The one thing we are going to do, grab them on chef cam. Go ahead and take a little seasoning. Again, if you don't want to use a Cajun seasoning, which this is just salt, pepper garlic and a little bit of cayenne pepper you can always use those things and adjust them yourself so hopefully the storms calm down a little bit now this has been going about 10 minutes with the other veggies and I'm gonna go ahead and add the okra and I'm also kind of looking at my moisture level in there and these okra are going to cook a little bit of moisture out of them and start thickening up. Last thing we're going to do is 
go in with our fresh shrimp and all I'm going to do is stir them around make sure they're all separated I'll put the lid on it and turn off the fire there you go that's Florida style shrimp sausage chicken gumbo with some fried fresh fish and fried okra Man, I could use some of that shrimp gumbo right now. It's a cool, rainy day uh, here in December. So uh, the next thing I got coming for you is was a big surprise to me. Back last summer, we caught one of those rare days where a flat calm out or close to it offshore. Went out offshore, caught a bunch of red snapper that we couldn't keep due to the federal rules. But caught a lionfish and cooked him up. I had no idea. First time I've ever eaten it. But y'all check out this great lionfish catch and cook. guys surprise catch a lionfish that's trash fish or treasure treasure right there <laughs> trash fish or treasure lionfish look at those prickles on that thing man I'm almost afraid to touch him st. Augustine lionfish so we're gonna be doing up the lionfish with our typical what we do with the, our trash fish treasure videos we're gonna season them we're gonna give them some uh, a, an egg mayo wash and dredge them give them an egg mayo wash hit them in panko and then we have already got that old good old Dutch oven cast iron going over there on a nice fire right, it's time for the start of the show let's give you our lionfish fillets go ahead and dump them in there I'm gonna give them a little bit of seasoning. Are we gonna season them? I would suggest season them. Season them before you do anything else. I'm gonna just give them a little Tony Satries there. Now that they're seasoned, I'm gonna dredge them very lightly with just a little bit of all purpose flour. Just to get that binder layer in there. Alright, you don't need a lot for this amount. Go do more, use more, but you want them to get completely coated in flour. And if you're doing like I'm doing here today and it gets most of the flour soaked up, you can use the same bowl to go back with our next step. So what we're gonna do now is bring over that egg mayo wash. We're just gonna run them guys through that stuff. A good coating on both sides. Hold it up. Let the excess drip off. Well, let's put them both in there first and get them good and coated. Because I need a place to go with them. Alright, let's wipe that up right here quick. And I'm kind of unprepared with this panko. I didn't even open a can yet. Plain panko. Plain old panko. Just enough to cover them. Spare. Alright. And we'll let them drip off. Actually, the more of this you let stay on there, the more panko is going to stick to them. Oh. Lose my product there. I really love this method for cooking fish. I don't always use it, but you know, unless I get something really special like today, sometimes I just throw that thing in some uh, Zatarain's Wonderful, which is my my favorite, by the way. Of if you you want to know what the Backwoods Gourmet favorite uh, out of the store fish breader mix is. It is Zatarain's Wonderful. 
love it so. Set my fire on medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay them away from me. Suggest you do that. Lay it away from you in case any grease splashes. Looks like that, golden brown. Summer here in the Gulf Coast of Florida, scallop season opens. Uh, we've been doing that for our last couple years. Check out this year's trip and the great dish we make with these fresh bay scallops from Florida. Out here on the scallop grounds, Gulf of Mexico, day one. We're already uh, scouting the shallow areas where it's easier. There's nobody. Probably a little over half a bucket. Been hard work. Yeah, two more to go. Florida best dog. This is my new lighter version of the scallops with pasta. First thing we're going to need some pasta today. I have fettuccine, which I have pre-cooked with basil, straight, straight straight from the garden over there. Got some olive oil. Should have been a little bit more prepared here um, by opening these containers, but. It is really hot. I need to throw them back in the cooler. But there's garlic. We got a lime. This is some reconstituted dehydrated Roma tomatoes that we put up a couple years ago. They're very much like sun-dried tomatoes. You can use sun-dried tomatoes in place of those. We made those ourselves. Parmigiano Reggiano must have for this dish. Again, blanched zucchini from our garden. Okay, that's I've had that in the freezer for a little while here just salt and pepper and today just for grins we're going to use some of this new I just found this in the Walmart that's old steel crackers two-step Cajun seasoning and of course the star of the show are base scallops that we just caught at the beginning of this video and what I've done is I put them in a sieve and I've reserved all the liquid that came out of them definitely going to be a uh, not wasted in this dish and as always, we need some butter to go with our olive oil. Uh, no good cast iron dish is going to be good without butter and or bacon. Uh, it didn't take long for that garlic to get all toasty. Kind of pull it off the side, go ahead and put in my scallop juice. A little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit of that Cajun two-step. Some of my sun-dried tomatoes to taste here. Those are going to give it a little bit of body. Right, I'll stir that up and that sauce is going to change colors. Probably have to come back with a little bit more olive oil. A little bit more butter before this is all over. Back on the fire. So we just gave that just uh, about three minutes. So I'll tell you, I'm going ahead and in there with my zucchini. That's a real nice little body. Those are already blanched. You don't let them. Well, not going to let them go too far. And here, one of the ingredients I did not list earlier because we just went and picked it from the garden. I'm just going to rip up some basil leaves that I just walked over there and picked guys if you're not growing your own herbs and stuff you don't know what you're missing it's just nothing that beats it when you go right to the plant pick it throw it right in your dish that's about juice of half of a pretty dry ass lime just a couple minutes take in our very precious 
scallops right on in there. I could have probably put them in there a little more gently. Gonna mix that all up with our sauce. These do not take any time to cook. So right in on top of that, I'm going with my cooked pasta. Again, we cook that with some with some herbs in it. The main thing here is we do not want to overcook the scallops. The more they cook, the more they're going to shrink, the tougher they're going to get. Let it come up just to a simmer. Make sure all of our scallops are cooked. That is freaking beautiful right there. All right. And I think, you know, one of the important things is if you go down in the bottom there and you get you some of that sauce. So you know we love them fried shrimp around here and today I'm going to show you the way we're doing them. You know, for you guys, it's a little bit out of the box, a little bit non-Florida style, but it turned out delicious. Check this out. All right, fellas, first two casts of the morning. Some pretty nice ones in there. Probably a four-inch shrimp. Same with that guy right there. Pretty good numbers for two casts. All right, first of all, for deep frying is what we're going to be doing today. Luan peanut oil is what we got, but peanut definitely peanut oil for this dish. Uh, love it. it. You can recycle it several times. Works great. If you don't have that, you, know, you go to a canola oil, something like that. Okay, even soybean oil work fine. I got a little um, flour. I've got some mayo. That's about two tablespoons. I got one egg. I got panko breadcrumbs for seasoning. I'm trying this one out here. A couple last few times I've cooked these. I think it's called Tajin, and it is red chili pepper with lime. It is super delicious on sure. Okay, if you don't have that, use your favorite or another good one is uh, Chef Paul's Seafood Magic. Here's our beautiful shrimp we just got done cleaning. Or stuff like that. Then but all the main ingredients, we either caught it or grew it. And that's going to add a lot of satisfaction for me in making this dish and show it to you. So first thing I'm going to do is make my egg mayo wash. This egg right out of our, our chicken coop. Again, kind of a self-sufficiency uh, meal here. Even the egg, we raised it. I'm going to take a whisk and just you um, be surprised at how easily this comes together. You want to whisk it till it's nice and smooth and there's no clumps. Just like that, that easy. Okay? Alright, next thing we want to do is season our shrimp. Pull these back, these are nice and cold. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a pretty good season of this tagin. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, again, mostly red chili pepper and dehydrated lime juice. And the lime is fairly strong on this too, which is going to go perfect with these shrimp. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get them marinated in that, that tagin. And then we're going to skip All right, we went ahead and got an oil. We got about an inch and a half worth of oil going over there, the peanut oil in the Dutch oven. And I'm probably going to batch these. I'm going to go ahead and drop about half of them into the flour. The uh, moisture drawed out of them and really rehydrated that uh, the tagin seasoning pretty well. Get this out of the way. Alright, so right out of the flour, right straight into our egg mayo wash. You want to shake off the excess flour if you can. And this is kind of a tedious process, but believe me, it makes a huge difference in the end. 
Yeah, it's kind of messy, especially for your fingers. All right, we got our panko here, and of course I didn't get this ready for you guys. A brand new pan, panko. Go ahead and put about half of that in our bowl over to the side there. Reset here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so you want to get those guys fully coated with the egg mayo wash and it's kind of thick and creamy and it's going to stick to that flour so you don't want to put too many of them in your bowl over here at, at a time either because they'll stick together but that's the whole purpose of this is to make this a binder for the panko over here so we got them in a bowl I'm just going to go ahead and you know, give them a good rolling around then over to the side I have a tray ready I put a piece of plastic on mine just to make it easier to clean up later and we'll pull them off one at a time and set them on a tray separately again I don't really want them touching but that batter is going to form on there with that panko and we just repeat the process until all of our shrimp are done So I hope you guys enjoyed this little compilation video of the best seafood recipes for 2023. If you like what we're seeing, please smash that like button down there. Hey, and guys, don't forget, if you want to see, we have over 500 videos on YouTube. Just click my picture, take it to the channel page, hit that videos tab. We got them all there in playlists for you. Go back and find stuff you may have never even seen before because YouTube hasn't suggested it yet. If you like so, what you're seeing, please hit that subscribe button right over there for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's gonna be right up there and for a whole playlist of cooking seafood outdoors, it's gonna be right up there. We'll see you next time.